Everyone's heard of Popeye the Sailor, right? Fighter of evil, savior of women and spokespersons for spinach, but he may not be all that well known nowadays. However, in his heyday, he was one of the best. But did you know that he didn't come from cartoons? Yeah, he came from newspaper comics. These days, it's very common for characters to make the leap from one to the other, or jumping from any medium to any other medium all the time. But uh, how did this guy do it all the way back then? Well... Here's Betty Boop, cartoon star of Fleischer Studios. She got her start in a 1930s sh short called Dizzy Dishes, a cartoon starring a little dog character named Bimbo. Yeah, I, I know, but he really was called that. It was cute, alright? It was cute at the time. Betty very, very quickly overtook the popularity of this once-again, on-again, off-again love interest. Bill may have been cute, but Betty was even cuter. With a sing-song pep in her step to everything she did, she was quite wholesome and enamoring for audiences all over the USA. Her cartoons would usually feature her in very domestic situations, trying to have her make the most of a rainy day, or protecting her farm from hu hooligans, or trying to run a hotel. Every short would almost always feature one original song, and they were quite catchy too. So Fleischer's got this big studio on their hands, and it's the early 30s. And you know what was exploding in the early 30s? The cartoon industry. Everyone had their own ideas for what to make, and they were all getting very excited to show it off. There was a huge explosion of characters and studios getting into animation, and it began what historians now like to call the golden age of animation. You don't just let a golden age pass you by, you just don't. So Fleischer begins the search for new cartoon stars that they can take to the big screen. And who would catch their eye but a little newspaper comic called Thimble Theater. And this comic was gaining traction at, at the time for its utilization of a rough and gruff sailor man by the name of Popeye. Thimble Theater began its life as a gag -a day comic strip starring Castor Oil, his sister Olive, and their friend Ham Gravy. I guess E.C. Sigir, the author, was hungry. The strip would find its footing as it moved towards more adventurous tales of globetrotting and meeting strange new people. One of these unassuming people would be known as Popeye. A one-off character initially used as a plot contrivance to get her character from point A to B, but he made such a huge impact on the audience that when his time was up and the story moved on without him, fans wrote in expressing their love for the character and how much they wanted to see more of him. Of course, Seeker couldn't turn them down, and Thimble Theater slowly transitioned from being all about Popeye the Sailor Man. It transitions to being all about Popeye the Sailor Man. The rowdy, ready-to-fight, bully-beaten, and fight-finishing Sailor Man. Fleischer Studios felt like they had a real catch on their hands. A character that already had wide appeal, making the leap to a format that would allow the action and adventure to really stand out seemed like the perfect move for them. But they had one catch. The studio was owned by Paramount Pictures, and Paramount wasn't so certain of his success. See, Betty Boop and Bimbo were popular, but they weren't making tons of money, and the studio was very, very ambitious. All of that means that they take risks, and it causes losses to a company like Paramount, so they wanted to do a test run for a new character like this. Don't make it a solo film. See if pairing him up with Betty Boop would help get his foot in the door. So how, how did that go? Popeye the Sailor, the short that is, not the character, follows the tale of Popeye the Sailor, the character that is, not the short. As a newspaper announces his grand debut to theaters, he begins to sing his theme song with evidently, which evidently tells us everything we need to know about him. He's Popeye, he's tough, he fights, and he eats spinach. You couldn't really ask for a more in-depth character study. Once he finishes his song, in comes Olive Oil. Remember her from earlier? Well, at this point, she's now Popeye's girlfriend, and the two of them take a trip down to the carnival in town. But who would show up but Bluto? A character that Popeye had previously dazzled with in the comics, Bluto takes the op every opportunity to show up Popeye at the carnival games, but is bested at each turn until the three of them go to, sta to a stage to watch a dancer. And the dancer is Betty Boop. You know, this is supposedly her short, after all. Her name's in the title. Well, while she's dancing and distracting Popeye, Bluto takes the opportunity to steal olive oil and tie her to the train tracks. But a brave Popeye steps in, eats some of his spinach, gets some newfound strength, rescues Miss Oil, and punches the daylights out of Bluto and the train, saving the day. 
it's really nice when everything wraps up so easily. So this short, well, it's a perfect example of what a Popeye cartoon would be like, which was the point, after all, to get the foot in the door. The actual storyline's a bit plain, but it is enjoyable to watch. The way they animate all the feats of strength Popeye uses is really inventive, such as when he punches the strongman game and launches it straight into the sun's eye, or when he punches the train and it just falls to pieces. The action is great, and that's why you're here. Benny Boop is barely in it, but that's when you get... To ha that's what happens when you have a show like this, which is what people like to call a backdoor pilot. Oh yeah, I didn't even talk about this. Backdoor pilots. See, th this is a short that is in essence just a Popeye short. It's all about him, but it's not starring him. The title character is Betty Boop, and it's her short, but it's not really, is it? Well, I mean, she is in it, but only for about 30 seconds when Popeye dances with her. That's the interesting about it, though, isn't it? I mean, I can imagine some people being really confused by it, but ultimately, it seems to have worked out. I mean, yeah, who would have thought? So, as you may already know, Popeye did become a smash hit, launching his own series of shorts that remained very popular throughout the golden age of animation. He became so popular and such an icon that he was responsible for increasing spinach sales in the United States in the late 30s. And all that success was just from Betty Boop taking a sidestep and letting the Sailor Man have his moment one time in 1933.